I'm back. And I wanted to make this last and final point, and I wanted to make this separate from the last video, and that is, you know, again, I do believe that Candace Owens is a social chameleon. And I made a few points about how she sort of communicated to and at the Black community early on in her career. And she found that type of grifting very advantageous. And so she understood that when she talked more negatively or down on Black people, that was more of an advantage to her. So fast forward her you know, Jewish contingency obviously is not working out. I think Candace is smart enough. She saw the writing on the wall. And again, <clears throat> she pivoted to the Ritz uh, pill space, not just because it was she, she could talk on the same points as guys about women and she could pretty much drill other women, you know, in a manner that some of these chauvinistic guys want it to see a woman drill another woman in. But it was also because that space was really dominated by a very traditional or an even chauvinistic Muslim population. Population. When you look at Kevin Samuels and who was giving him most of the money, who was basically co-signing most of his talking points and propping him up, it was the Muslims. And you look at all of his comments and he was getting a lot of love from Muslim men. And so I think that people like Candace and Kanye, they're very smart because they understand that, hey, Muslims got money to their demographic that you can tap into and ally with as well. So, you know, I see a lot of black people in response to Candace getting fired by the Daily Wire, sort of calling out some of her earlier comments and commentary about black American people. And I think that's a very important point to call out because it's like, you know, when you want to talk about, oh, you know, I was really just trying to talk about black people and our problems. It's like there was a lot of conscious black people on the mic talking about the same thing. I could argue that some of her conversations were leeching off of their talking points. But at the same time, it's the manner in which you say and do things. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I think that Candace has really created a a an issue for herself because as she tries to, you know, play the black, you know, put on her black face again and chameleon back into the black community doing Joe Button interviews, right? and being way more centered on her conversation about black people, being way more positive and uplifting about her conversation about black people than she ever was before. And black people notice things like that. People remember, you know, what did you get paid to do the most? And it was really to talk about black Americans, highlight black Americans in general, a lot of times, you know, as if we were ignorant, as if we were in general unintelligent people, and even leveraging those African and Caribbean migrants who sometimes would want to remove themselves from being attached to Black Americans. So she's very smart, very strategic. And I think right now she has to figure out how to play chess with her career right now, because now she has to figure out how do I navigate in a bunch of spaces? Because like pearly things, it, you know, she, at least Candace can navigate in a red pill space because she's married, she has children. For the most part, she's a person that sort of, you know, epitomizes, you know, what you should do right in your life. Like, a, instead of, you know, kind of taking some of the rogue feminist chauvinist positions about things, you know, which I think she's still kind of centered towards the chauvinist position. But I say that to say, I saw her on Joe Button recently, and it was almost like seeing somebody totally different. And it was almost like somebody like, you know, completely oblivious as to why black people would be very skeptical about her. And again, it's not what you say, it's how you say it and who you're actually appealing to at the time that you're saying it. Candace Owens, for the most part, um, somebody was posting a tweet from 2019, it looks like, um, where, you know, she was making some comments about studying um, basically the social 
economic situation between blacks and immigrant and black looking immigrants. Right. And then June 19, 2023, she talked about how Juneteenth was ghetto and made up. And really that was not true. Juneteenth was not made up. It was actually an observation by a certain demographic in the black community. And it sort of trickled into a lot of fraternities and churches, but it really just engrafts on as this collective thing that all Black people acknowledged and followed up until 2023. So she was very incorrect about that, you know, and she was really just tr- making statements, clickbait statements for, for, you know, obviously the audience appeal to non-Black people. And Black people remember things like this. And so I wish people, you know, well in their career. I mean, none of us are perfect. You know, I think that she's smart enough to be able to pivot and doing whatever she decides to do, you know, and I think she will. Like, I personally believe, like I said, Candace Owens is smart, intelligent. She's beautiful. She has a big audience. She's going to know kind of how to pivot in order to keep her platform going. So in terms of that I'm not worried about, you know, but at the same time, it's like, I do feel like people like, you know, Candace Owens are like angels that, you know, present themselves as an angel of light. But really, I think, you know, any person that wants to be attached to Satan's world, like I said, you know, there's somebody I'm going to automatically be skeptical of no matter how nice they are. So, I hope you guys again have a wonderful weekend. And I just wanted to add this talking point because I was like, just kind of checking, you know, and I'm like, wow, you know, a lot of people are kind of getting on a mic and talking about the separation between her and the daily wire. And obviously a lot of black people are kind of, you know, they call it, you know, black Twitter, black Instagram. Some people have some interesting statements to say about her being separated from the daily wire. And I think that she knew this was going to happen. I think she knew it was going to happen. I think that was that whole Joe button interview. I think that that was a chess move. I think to get back cool with the black community, you know, obviously showing up on, you know, red pill space areas like fresh and fit recently, that's a chess move. Tucker Carlson is a chess move. She understands what her chess moves are. And I think that she's kind of playing, and to that Kanye card. Because like I said, there was a lot of suppression on Kanye's recent Vultures project. But, you know, when you look at the outcomes of the album and how it's charting, how it's doing, it's undeniable that he was able to pull that project off without the mainstream machine. And it it just kind of reveals so many things in the broader context of conversations. But I'm going to leave it here. You guys have a wonderful weekend, and I will catch you on the next one. Bye.